And you're back with us in Belgium where Michael Schumacher has won the Grand Prix here this afternoon. But the race was stopped after just five laps after a dramatic and frightening looking accident involving the young Brazilian Luciano Berti. Let's get the latest reaction from the managing director now of his Prost team. Joanne, a horrible, horrible moment for the team there. What, what's the latest news that you've heard on Luciano? Okay, the, we know that he left the circuit. He was conscious and I was talking because some of the members of the team was there with him. Uh, the doctor said that they have nothing broke, but obviously have a big shine in the, in the face. He was a bit bruised and uh, he's been taken to, to the real hospital. He was a very, very lucky boy because that was a horrendous accident, wasn't it? Yeah, well, Natalia looks very, very impressive. Uh, lucky enough, there was a lot of rubber down there and hopefully uh, absorbed a little bit the shine. Mark, you've come through an accident like that. What were your first impressions when you saw it? Uh, very similar. Uh, the big issue with my one and that one is there was four rows of tyres for Luciano and there was concrete for me. But the problem he has now is that there's a little bit of a psychological edge. He's got to walk over that, the next hurdle. And also the after effects. Uh, even in my accident three days later, I had a bruise in the brain. And uh, sometimes those things don't come out until a few days down the road. Do you fault him in any way in this accident? I did have a little word with Mark about perhaps it was slightly naive to try the overtaking there and under rookie's error, just looking at it from, from my perspective. And also makes me think back to Germany, obviously where he was unsighted, but, but here we are going down the edge. He's got two wheels on the grass there. Eddie's coming in to take his normal line, so it's not a particularly clever thing to do, I hate so. And of course he loses his front wing and loses any steerage and the front, suspen front right suspension is already broken as well because he saw the wheel waving about. But yeah. Germany after the crash as well, Mark, as we, we were saying, he had two further accidents as well. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just an unusual place to try and overtake. He would have been well served to just wait till after the corner and go for the bus stop. But there you go, you know, that's racing. It was the fastest corner of, of the track where he crashed. Uh, Blanchemont, what is it, 190 miles an hour there? And just looking at the pros getting, getting taken away, it, it's a real pat on the back for the strength and the safety measures in these cars these days. Yeah, it's a testament to the strength of the cars. Um, FIA set regulations, these designers and technology people for the teams keep striving to make them stronger and stronger, and they're doing a good job. But nobody likes to see that kind of impact. Whenever you see that, it's, uh, it's a bit of a lump in the throat. Just a little thought for, for, for you here about this circuit, which we've said hasn't actually been compromised in any way particularly. Do you think people will look at that now, Tony, and say, we've got to do something about this, it's just too quick, too dangerous? There have been mutterings during practice. Uh, runoff areas not big enough, not long enough. Uh, we're going to have to start behind the pace car. If it's wet, that came from Coulthard, it came from Irvine. But the point is, they all actually love coming here. And I think if you sat them all down and so said, we go back to Spa next year, they go, yes, please, because it is probably the ultimate challenge in Grand Prix racing. And you can't ch overly change a traditional track like this. OK, let's just confirm the result for you then here at Spa, Franco Shaw, this afternoon. 10 out of 10 again for Michael Schumacher. David Coulthard up there on the podium. Fisser Keller's first podium. Hakkinen fourth. Rubens Barrichello looking to make up ground on, uh, on Coulthard for that second place overall in fifth place. And Jean Alessi making his point for Jordan. Let's go to the press conference, shall we, and hear from the top three. From Fisser Keller, from Coulthard and from Michael Schumacher. Your Michael Schumacher wanting even more at Monza in a couple of weeks' time and their confirmation. 52 victories for the four times German world champion. One more than Prost. Senna Mansell, Sir Jackie Stewart, Jim Clark and Nicky Lauda in that very exclusive club. Uh, never any danger today, Tony. I think it's fabulous for Michael Schumacher. It's his 10th anniversary of his debut here in 91 for Jordan. Uh, the following year when he was teammate to our own Martin Brundley had his first victory here. And now he's joined the great Ayrton Senna and the great Jim Clark on five-time winner at spa franco a circuit that, you know, he loves so much, so close to his heart, so close to his home. And the fans who all came here to pay homage to him have gone away rewarded. Driver to driver, any chinks in that Schumacher armour? I can't see any. I don't think so. I mean, now and again he does lose concentration, but we've seen that before in world champions like Senna at Monte Carlo. Um, but when you've got nothing to do, you know, when it's so easy, it's going to happen. But I think we need to extend the track, for him at least. <laughs> <laughs> right. We have plenty more incidents to look at. We're going to chat to one or two of the key characters as well when you rejoin us in Spa CC. <laughs> with a 
Sats Spa. Michael Schumacher has, has cantered away to victory in the Belgian Grand Prix. Now, Mark, it started off with two Williams on the front row of the grid. We expected great things. Possibly Montoya's first Formula One victory. What an afternoon they had, though. Terrible, really. I mean, uh, Monty's dream got crumbled very early on. Their hands up in the air, engine stalled. We don't know whether that's because the initiation of input in first gear or something software-wise. But um, a hard blow for him and a hard blow for the team. Everything that he did yesterday, wasted. At the same point, there's uh, the issue there with Ralph Schumacher up on the uh, the jack still. <laughs> How I've can never that happen? I've never seen that before in Grand Prix racing. In fact, I've, uh, I don't think I've ever seen it in racing full stop. And a bad, bad uh, issue, you know, for Williams' team. I mean, they should not make mistakes like that at all. And here's Montoya blowing up at the end, and, uh, well, Martin Brundle asking one or two questions about the reliability of the BMW engine. Well, we saw early in the warm-up that they weren't doing many laps, so, uh, you know, a discussion already came up, actually, between me and Martin, that we thought the engines weren't going to be reliable, and definitely for Monty, we were proving right, weren't we? Start of the show, if, if you were with us, we saw Giancarlo Fisichella, Paul was putting a brave face, wasn't he, on his, on his return to Jordan. I think he's genuinely very happy now, isn't he, after, that, uh, after getting up on the podium? But how happy are Benetton letting him go? The team love him. Alan Pomain, his engineer, has been with him from the start. He's been at Benetton, worked very closely. They've helped develop that car together, along with Mike Gascoigne and his team, made these improvements, which started in Hungary with this, you know, this sort of high downforce aerodynamic packages working. But this lightning started, just incredible button as well coming through, only being foiled at the last minute um, by Hacken going in front of him, Barrichello getting overtaken, and Fisichella up to second place uh, whilst uh, De La Rosa gets sandwiched there in between Heidfeld and poor old Montoya taking a knock as well at the start and that's when we saw look uh, De La Rosa out of control and actually hitting Heidfeld as they went down the hill look again look at Fisichella's start absolutely lightning clear clearly huge improvements to that Renault engine 110 degree V revolutionary they've taken Bing Gambles this year and there's the squeeze you saw in the sandwich Della Rossa getting it at the hit from Heidfeld. David Coulthard's worst qualifying position for three years, Mark. He spent a lot of the time in this racer looking at Fisichella from behind and finally, finally got past him for the second place. He drove a solid race, DC. Um, you know, the move was a good move as well. Outstanding when he went around the outside there into the chicane. Was having a difficult time, obviously, because that engine there from the Renault pushing out a lot of its oil. So that's not an easy thing when you're a race driver. When you lose those visor tear-offs, eventually you've got to use your glove and your visor gets smeared and it does become tough. But he drove well and solid and um, a good performance and, you know, a few more points in the bag. Fifth place uh, for Rubens Barrichello. That, that's a couple of points. I get the feeling, though, he expected more. And perhaps Michael Schumacher was primed here to support him as he tries to get second place in the overall championship. I'm pretty sure, we're pretty sure the team expected much more from Rubens. He lost it on the last day. And in fact, even after the warm up, he said he'd lost the balance of the car and he was trying to get it back. But he also lost it in the first, after the first round of pit stops because after the restart, he'd been in third place. And then uh, he dropped all the way back, and hence he had to take that fight. And this is the point where he lost his nose cone. And uh, we think that he took too much curb. We didn't see detailed pictures and lost his nose cone, which meant he had to come in for a new one. We're going to hear now from uh, Rubens Barrichello, big pal of Luciano Berti, fellow Brazilian. Here he is with James. Rubens, it's a difficult day for you. You lost the front wing. Tell us about it. Yeah, it was such a difficult day. Um the second start was, was crap and uh, I lost the position up to, to Fisichella and then uh, I didn't have the straight line speed to overtake him. And then the, the pit stop didn't go well. My, 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 my race was lost. I mean, afterwards, uh, I had a, a vibration on the tire. I had a bit of everything today, really. So I lost the, the wing, I lost everything. But the good news is your friend and fellow countryman, Luciano Berti, seems to be okay. Oh, that's, that's, that's good news because I've been, I've been thinking on the race get the impression he was a bit worried about Luciano there to only get the impression he wasn't that chuffed about his second start either. No, uh, <laughs> not at all. <laughs> C-R-A-P, I believe. <laughs> yes, speaking from, from the heart there, but he's, I, I think he probably still has got time, hasn't he, to, get, to put the pressure on David Coulthard, although Coulthard's second place on him, no harm at all today. Um, what about the safety aspects of this place? Tony, you think that shouldn't be changed. Mika Hakkinen, former world champion, I get the feeling he's going to disagree with you as he chats now to James. Mika, tell us about your afternoon. How was it, you mean? Yeah. Uh, well, not so fantastic. I mean, 
my personal performance on the race, I'm happy about it. Sad about what has happened this today, you know, a lot of, lot of negative in terms of accidents and things like that. So, uh, terrible weekend. And you're looking at those corners over there. It's a very high speed corner, so uh, things like that, if you go off there, it is uh, catastrophic. Not happy with those high speed corners, Tony? No, he's not, but I mean, you know, it is the ultimate challenge. And you talk to people like Villeneuve, and he say, This is the ultimate challenge. We don't want to lose it. And uh, if you've got to start behind a pace car here, he says, You may as well not bother turning up. OK, let's hear from Jean Alacy. Terrific battle at the end he had there with Ralphie Schumacher before scoring a point for Jordan. Jean, congratulations. One world championship point, and boy, you had to work for it. No, it was fantastic because uh, obviously the beginning of the race was a, a big emotion for us drivers, I mean both of us, because uh, when we uh, have a, a red flag because uh, there is this kind of accident, uh, honestly it's uh, very hard to start again. Uh, I don't know actually the condition of uh, Bourtini uh, yet, but I hope uh, he's okay. And he is okay. Here's the constructors and Ferrari away and gone. McLaren uh, holding that second place ahead of Williams and uh, Sauber. Four points clear of British American Racing and Honda, and they are level, both fifth and six. BAR and Jordan both on 16 points. Be sure to join us a little bit later on uh, tonight for the highlights of the uh, Belgian Grand Prix as we look back at a pretty dramatic race we've had here, or races, I should probably say. Highlights coming your way later on tonight yeah, here, here on ITV. And there we are, just after midnight, repeated ITV2, just before 1 o'clock tomorrow. Next we go to Monza for the Italian Grand Prix in a couple of weeks' time. We'll give you the full ITV service throughout the weekend. The qualifying show, live on the Saturday at 11.30. All the pre-race build-up from just after midday. Highlights at 11.45. The show repeated 12.50, ITV2. There we are then. We salute Michael Schumacher, statistically the greatest ever. Our thoughts, though, are with uh, Luciano Berti. He's OK. We're going to call him Lucky Luciano from now. Bye-bye. If you'd like to know more about Formula One, the website address sponsored by Fosters is www.itv-f1.com.